the exact same words this morning sitting here that this is what the Lord said to me, this is a faithful people. And, um, you know, since I married Roger, we've been in churches all over the place. And I've never heard that word before. But the Lord says you're a faithful people. That's a real compliment, not only to you, but to your pastors. They've taught you well, and you've heeded to the word of God, and you've listened to it. And you've obviously put it into practice in your lives. And we are growing and maturing. That's, you know, if you're in God, you just can't help it because he won't leave you alone. He's just going to keep prodding you on. Um, I do want to share just briefly something that's on my heart about the kingdom of God. The scripture says to seek first the kingdom of God. And when we were singing the song this morning about manifesting the kingdom, I couldn't understand really for a long time what seeking the kingdom of God was. It's like, you know, first of all, you're invisible, can't see you. And then there's this kingdom that we're supposed to seek, and I don't have a clue what that means. So I really sought the Lord and asked him to teach me about these things. And the one thing that we know is that the kingdom of God is within us. And if the world ever needed to see the kingdom of God manifested, it's today. The kingdom of God is peace. It's righteousness and it's joy in the Holy Spirit, and it's inside of us. And when he instructs us, really it's a command. He didn't say, well, if you feel like it today, would you please seek the kingdom of God? No, he said, seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. So when we're seeking the kingdom of God, it's like Brother Terry said, it really is getting our soul into alignment with peace. With what's right in God's eyes, you know, for years there was a lot of preaching about we are the righteousness of God and that is absolutely the truth. But if we are the righteousness of God, then our behavior should be righteous behavior. Yes, we serve a holy God. And um, as we learn, as Pastor was saying, to have the Lord heal our soul. You know, the scripture doesn't say the spirit is being saved. It says the soul is being saved. Yes. That's our mind, our will, our emotions, and those sorts of things. And it's what messes us up when our soul is out of balance. And all of the experiences of life and the traumas and the heartaches and things that happen cause wounds in our soul. Yes. And we have caused wounds in other people's souls. Yes. But our God is a tremendous healer. And as we seek first his kingdom, he's going to, and he is, I mean, he's done a major work in my life, just years of cleansing and changing and renewing my mind to think differently about the situations in life and how to respond to the situations of life. I'm just a practical person. I grew up with, I couldn't relate to common sense very well. And so I made a lot of foolish decisions. But, um, you know, God, he is so magnificent. And Jesus Christ shed his blood. That's not just a little price. He's not going to leave us unfinished. Hallelujah. That was a mighty big price for him to pay for us. Yeah. And you know what? There's a lot of people out there that aren't hearing God today. But God's here talking to us. Think about that. The Almighty God that created everything, everything, the worms, the caterpillars, the lions and tigers, everything. He's talking to us. That's awesome. You know, that's just awesome when you think about that. That's a privilege for us. He's chosen us out of all the people of the world that he could have chosen. He chose us. And he chose us for his purposes. And I was thinking today that as we seek first the kingdom of God, there's going to be changes internally, but there's going to be changes externally. Our countenance is going to glow with the glory of God. People need to see that. Yes. They need to see us walking in peace instead of getting all bent out of shape over whatever happens. Right. You know, 
it's easy. I've done it over and over. But the Lord is bringing me to a higher place of steadfastness. He said, the mountains will be brought down and the valleys will be brought up. Yes. Yes. Now that could mean a lot of things, but to me that means a stable walk. Yes. A walk in the kingdom of God, of peace, of knowing what to do in a situation. Yes. And then being able to handle life. And I'm telling you, God is going to manifest us to the world because there's millions of people that don't have a clue. Right. And they are just miserable. And we're going to be their answer. Christ in us. Yes. So I praise the Lord for you and I thank you. And I just do want to say this on a personal note that you have been so friendly and so kind. And I don't know that I've ever had so many hugs and kisses in all my life. <laughs> but you know... That was hard for me at one time, but as we grow in love, you know, those things just happen naturally. Yes. It's not like you have to make yourself do that. And you've just been a very gracious people, and we certainly appreciate the wonderful people working in the kitchen and getting all that good food ready for us. So, But we just bless you. I'm anxious to hear what the prophet of God has to say today, because I believe God is just doing... A real genuine work. Not just get up and hoop and holler, but when we come down, we want to be able to walk in that yes, state yes, of peace. Right. So we bless you. I can't see to turn it off. Praise your Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't think we're already on the turn of law. Am I on now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Amen. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity and the privilege to be in this house. And Father, I thank you for the awesome work you're doing in our spirit. Father, as we breathe in the Spirit of God, we thank you, Lord, that we can breathe out faith. And Father, that you enable us to go into a higher place in you, got into a place where the beasts of the field don't walk, where the tormenting spirits can't come. But God, there's peace and safety. Father, as we endeavor to deliver the message that you dropped in my heart today, God, I ask you, Lord, for your ability, for Holy Ghost to go forth and deliver. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Before I even start this morning, I want to just thank everybody, especially um, Pastor and Sister Taylor, for their hospitality and for their fellowship. And brother, I just want to say by the word of the Lord, the Lord be between me and thee. And I appreciate the fellowship. <laughs> See, we're, we're hot together. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we love you guys. Amen. Uh, let's go back to the book of Esther, if you will. I sensed in my spirit and God just started dealing with it, with it through, uh, through the service and through... Um, Brother Terry and, and so forth, just uh, God this morning wanting to just go into a depth in us and begin a healing. You know, a lot of times we're, we're whenever we hear something physically, maybe the, uh, and we're feeling uh, sick or something in our body, uh, you know, we automatically go into uh, uh, praying and all, and, and, and we, want, we want you to be healed in your physical body, but sometimes the real things that are making us ill or keeping us from uh, functioning as we should as a body are the things that are uh, deep. The Lord gave me a message a couple of years ago uh, now, and it was a time whenever we were having uh, having uh, times whenever we were coming together and praying, and we they were called saturation services and all. I, I never did understand everything that was supposed to be being done, but I do know that there were some genuine miracles that began to take place uh, in that, and there were people that physically, I know personally, I experienced 
uh, a lady that was a paraplegic that somebody brought, and she was sitting in the back of a, uh, in the wheelchair, and just, you know, her head hung over, and just kind of tied in the chair, and, and the Lord spoke to me and said, go lay your hand on her back. And when I went and laid my hand right below the, uh, her neck there on her back, there was a, a, a knot as uh, big as my fist there, but as I laid my hand on that, I felt it just melt like hot butter. And she didn't totally uh, come into a healing that night, but over the course of the next few weeks, uh, she, be, she kept coming in and she'd do a little more and a little more uh, until I came back, actually been in North Carolina ministering, came back into the, into the house and looked around and there was, her wheelchair wasn't there, but she was sitting up on, uh, about on the second or third bench. And she looked around at me and she got up and walked without any effort or anything straight, uh, straight to me and put her arms around me and thanked me for praying and everything. So, you know, it was a great time of physical manifestation of healing and different things uh, that were going on. But in the midst of that, God gave me a message uh, that said, uh, every whit whole. Yeah. And the scripture talks about us being every whit whole. Sometimes there's uh, things that are deep that if we don't get rid of them, the same things keep coming on us. That's right. Amen. I worked in North Carolina one time at a, at a, a place where they made doors, wooden doors, these uh, newer type panel doors, and it got a splinter in my hand right down in my hand there, and I couldn't get it out. And it was months later, and actually uh, maybe a couple of years later, it was quite a, quite a bit later, it kept uh, being a problem there. And because it, I, I would put sand or something on it, it would heal over the top, but the, but the uh, splinter was still in there. <coughs> And no matter what I do, I couldn't get it out. We can, you know, let people dig around in it and, you know, you know do all that stuff trying to get it out. And then, uh, because the splinter was still in there, it kept festering back up. Okay, can we go after the splinter today? Yes. You know, it, 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 it quicks a little bit whenever you go after the, what, something that's deep. And God doesn't just want to heal us outwardly. Yes. A lot of times, even in our Pentecostal circles, we've settled for an outward uh, show. You know, we get somebody uh, up and, and we have them, uh, you know, go through the thing. And, and I, know, uh, <laughs> I know different preachers have had uh, different ways of, of, of stimulating people's faith, you know. Uh, and back in the... 40s and 50s, they would even go so far as, uh, you know, if you had a sickness, they'd punch you wherever the sickness was or whatever. But, but God today, there's a reason that we have disease, dis-ease. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I've watched people over the years and those that, that keep having reoccurring, reoccurring problems. There's something else going on in their life that's dis-ease. Yes. Yes. And so God, the scars that Brother uh, Taylor was, was talking about that's there, that God wants to heal some deep things. Uh, I believe with all my heart that uh, there's things in people that they've carried all their life. Brother, I, I carried things all my life from my childhood all the way into my 40s and 50s before I realized that God began to deliver me from some things. Right. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, and, and when He delivered me, it was like I didn't even uh, know that the problem was there until God delivered me and it was gone and, I, and it was like there was a new light, a new world. Yes. Amen. And so today, the things that the, the things that are deep in there, the things that have festered. I was in uh, that splinter. I was in uh, on a road trip to the west, and I was in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and finally the thing uh, after it must have been close to two years, uh, the thing festered up one more time, and I prayed, and I really got in there, and with everything I could do, began to begin to put pressure on that thing. Until it finally popped on out. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Come on, are you feeling any pressure? <laughs> Look at somebody say pressure is good sometimes. Yes. See, sometimes it takes the pressure to bring out those things that have uh, that have hindered you and kept you from being all you can be for God. Okay. Now, don't be deceived. Whenever uh, guys, whenever uh, uh, they put those advertisements on, uh, you know that that we, we want a few good men and, and all that and. Uh, you know, and they show all those uh, strong uh, guys that's always been in the Marines and in the Army and everything. You know, they got that way because the first thing they do when you go in there is put pressure on you. Yes. yes. <laughs> you begin to come under the pressure. We were singing, we're in the Army of the Lord, but if you're in the Army of the Lord, uh, it's no different. That's true. It's no different. My youngest son... Uh, one time, he's so much like me that he and I kind of growing up with butt heads a lot. When he was growing up, with butt heads a lot. I wouldn't both of us growing up, I guess. But, but, uh, but I was praying. Uh, I knew some things. He had to find direction for his life. He had to find, uh, you know, a place that he could cross that line of maturity. And as I was praying, I saw him in in army uh, green and in fatigues and. And I thought, oh God, I don't know if that's the place for him or not, because I remembered all the negative things that were was exposed whenever I was in there. And but anyhow, next thing that happened uh, is, and what I told him out of that is, the Lord said to him, endure hardness as a good soldier. Well, and the, the some a group came through from Denver, Colorado. A group of young people came through uh, in the in what's called the Master's Commission, which is primarily out of a. Uh, assemblies of God uh, but uh, when they came in they were in army fatigues and they began to perform up on stage and begin to give their testimonies and God said that's it so I said okay God if that's it I'm not saying anything he's going to come to me and sure enough right after service he said that I feel like I'm supposed to go and, and that experience for, for two years they were out there for a year and can I tell you, when you take a, when you take kingdom kids and put them in the midst of, uh, of some traditional uh, traditional um, uh, church folks, things begin to happen. So the second year he came, he, they did it back uh, with us because they couldn't take that kingdom stuff out there. But the whole master's commission, all of them came. In fact, my he married one of the the young ladies that was in the master's commission because. But the, the pastor packed them up and sent them all the way because he couldn't agree with the kingdom of God. Hello. But can I tell you, out of that, there was, there was healing. There was, a, there was three or four of our guys that began to, to come in that. But it was a time of pressure for him. There was pain there. There was things that he, had, uh, that, that, that he was frustrated with. And it was a time of healing. Can I tell you, uh, today, the pressure you've been feeling, God sent it to make you and to bring you to the... Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I think about somebody like Esther who, uh, who who came in as a Jew and the plan and the plot was to kill Jews. Yes. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. See, and, and as Esther came in there, she's supposed to go before the king as one of the potential candidates to be a wife, a queen. Yes. Look at somebody say pressure. Pressure. Because if they find out who she is, can you hear what I'm saying? See, God's preparing you to reign in life. God's preparing you to go, uh, to go into some things. Uh, and I believe it with all my heart. The Lord gave me back there on that table, as a matter of fact, is a, uh, a message called Taking Up Serpents. Somebody heard me say that in a service and said, Brother, y'all pick up snakes? And, you know, I said, No, we don't pick up no snakes, uh, but we do take up serpents. <laughs> with God, he would have been filled with the Holy Ghost and took that thing up and, and, and taken care of it. <laughs> but, but, you see, when you take something up, you expose it for what it is. Yes. I'm on this, I'm trying to go to the, to the message, but the Lord won't let me get leave it right now. But see, that's still one of the signs that follow them to believe they'll take up serpents. Yes. And it's a spirit. Is that right? 
It's a spirit that possibly came in the middle of the night whenever you were a child and you were touched inappropriately. It possibly came whenever, uh, whenever somebody said something to you and made you feel unworthy or dumb yes. or ugly. See, that's a spirit. And you have to realize the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes, Lord. Yes. And if that spirit, uh, if that spirit uh, that, that made you feel that way continues, then it causes you to react. For example, if you feel overweight, you'll, you'll, it, that spirit tends to make you feed that thing, literally and spiritually, feed that thing and... and uh, it turns in a little bit of overweight turns into obesity and unhealthiness. Can you hear what I'm saying? Now all of us could stand to, to possibly learn to eat better. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about, you know, we need better habits, but I'm talking about a spirit that begins to get on people, uh, not does it, but, but gets in there. It's like that thorn that keeps festering and keeps us bound. Yes. Yes. Going back to the message last night. See, Many of the things doesn't just come from your childhood, and it hadn't just come uh, from your <coughs> excuse me from your uh, uh, somebody saying something to you uh, outside or in, in your childhood. Sometimes it's come through having a, a, the wrong diet spiritually, and from being under uh, under those fathers of the flesh, if you will. Yes. That have tried to correct us. Uh, with a heavy hand and without a motivation to bring us to maturity. Yes. Can you hear what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah. See, and a lot of times we haven't known the 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 lady, the young lady that was uh, kept cap. I think it was wound up being three of them, including the the the, the lady's uh, child uh, that was kept captive, and they found uh, maybe a year or two ago. Uh, they finally went in there, and, and uh, all a lot of controversial around that. But, but there was empathy toward her captor because they had to depend on they had to depend on the captors so much for food for, for their very life because that atmosphere had been created yeah. and see even that's the way religion comes in religion's like a thorn yes amen religion is is, is that Mark Henry preached the message. Uh, one time, uh, about three un unclean frogs that get down under the mud and wait for the time you can't see them. And then, you know, Revelation talks about unclean spirits like frogs. Yes. And those frogs that get down under the mud and, and, and they're just there and, and at the right time they keep, come, they keep coming up just to irritate you or, or, or bring you back to a remembrance. Yes. Somebody love the Lord with me. And see, God is after those things that we can begin to, to get rid of those things by the Spirit, but we forget we try to, we, we, we try to handle these things by the flesh. Yes. You know, I found out a long time ago, there's a, anything you try to handle by the flesh is not permanent. That's Amen. true. Amen? Amen. But if you... By the Spirit, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, if, if you're in this place, I'm, I'm going, this is sometimes God does this to me. I'm going after this right up front. Uh, but if you're here today and there's something that keeps festering up in your life, something that keeps... Uh, making you feel unworthy. Uh, the, I, I felt that spirit that try, tries to come back to some of you. As we've talked, not so much in the in the service, I, I, I feel it and see it, but as we begin to come together, I, I sense that. You, you're not unworthy because He's made you worthy. Amen. We just sung about a blood ball church. Yes. Yes. See, the religious world keeps waiting for a bride without spot or wrinkle. But I see, I see a church that's already without spot or wrinkle because he's already 
I've been there. Come on, hear what I'm saying. Amen. See, what, what does it take to bring you to a place without a spot or wrinkle? It takes pressure and heat. God. Look at somebody and say, I've had that. <laughs> I've had the pressure and I've had the heat. So this morning, I want you to be aware, God, in this hour, I believe with all my heart, God's put a mandate on me uh, even more strenuously this weekend, Brother Terry, to begin to declare a new day in God begin to declare uh, freedom from things that have kept us in bondage. Yes, amen. I told you last night. Uh, I quoted where where Paul said, uh, "I was without sin, uh, 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 once without the law, but when the law came, sin revived, and I died." Where did it Where did it uh, come from? <laughs> what revived sin? The law, religion. Yes. yes. Somebody in a pulpit that was uh, that was bringing you back under condemnation that just wanted to show greater numbers uh, in the altar. Yes. If we understood the altar, the altar under the old covenant where was where things were slain, things died there, yes. they, and, and they didn't just kill them and bury them somewhere; they burnt them. Amen. Come on, your sins have not only been dealt with. At that Hallelujah. Passover altar, they have been burned and they have been, come on, they have been cast into the fire. Look at somebody say, God's a consuming fire. Yes. Hallelujah. Whenever it is cast into the fire uh, and burned, they, they are no more. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Amen. I remember years ago, William Branham telling a story about somebody in his church and and uh, it, he was a businessman and and uh, the, the lady's dad had to stay with her, had to live with him. Uh, and, and he'd be reading his Bible and he'd get to shout, Woo! One of them old Baptist shouts, you know. <laughs> and and uh, so that they were uh, they were having a, a dinner for the boss, the man's boss, and that he was facing a promotion, and that's what it was supposed to be about. And they said, What are we going to do about Grandpa? Well, we'll put him upstairs and we'll take his Bible away. So they put him upstairs in one of the children's room, and they said, Dad, we're going to take your Bible because we just can't afford to. To embarrass, uh, embarrass yourself for this, is, it means a promotion. So right in the middle of dinner, they heard they heard a, a, a big, Woo! Glory to God! And the daughter went running up there and said, said, Dad, what are you shouting about now? You're not even got a Bible. And he said, yeah, but I was reading this, um, this grandson's encyclopedia and it said I found out well, and there was places they couldn't even find the bottom of the sea. And I remember the Bible said my sins yeah. are cast into the bottom of the sea never to be remembered no more. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I felt, I felt a little goosebump on that one. <laughs> but see, when we understand that our sins have been dealt with, Hallelujah. quit letting religious people right, raise up your oh, sins, God. resurrect your sins. Yeah. Come on, there, I know I believe in the resurrection. But hallelujah, there's some things that don't need to be resurrected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Let's turn, turn, turn back to Ezra. And let me try to finish up here. <clears throat> some things that we started because, amen, I, I hope you've gotten something out of, out of what we've said. I know the Lord said coming over, uh, or two days before we left coming over, uh, that, that begin to tell the people uh, in South Carolina, in, in the Augusta area there, that begin to tell the people uh, that I want to do a work of restoring. We started out Friday night about uh, talking about uh, out of the book of Joel, Joel, where he said, "I will restore the years." Somebody say years. Years. I don't know about you, but I got some. I got some years <coughs> that I felt like some things were lost. Yes. That's right. Yes. I will restore the years, and I got some things that's been lost. God said, I'm going to restore the years that the palmer worm, the canker worm, and caterpillar, uh, uh, the locust have eaten. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of feeding locusts, brother. That's right. <laughs> Somebody hear what I'm saying? I'm tired of feeding locusts. God didn't call me to feed any locusts. That's right. Hallelujah. Because they've been eating all my stuff. They've been eating my years away. But I'm going to tell you, we are in the place right now. God set us in the place. 
There's seed in you. Look at somebody and say, there's seed in you. There's incorruptible seed in you. There's the Word of God in you that's been planted for years. Thank God for those that came before us, and I already addressed some of that. Thank God for those that came before us that planted seed. But now it's a day whenever God's sending forth those that's going to water that seed, and you watch the increase that God is going to bring. We are, we're, we're in a time that it's actually an exciting time because we're seeing God uh, do mighty and marvelous things, but it's also a sad time because as we see a generation that's passing off the scene, whether it's physically or whether the effectiveness of their ministry is passing off, uh, it doesn't make any difference. But those that are trying to hold on to what was. That's right. Yeah. Oh, mighty God. Come on. Not trying to put anybody down because if there's anything we need today, it's unity. I'm going to talk about that a little bit in a few minutes. But see, th there's those that are so desperately trying to hold on to people and they do it through manipulation, they do it through condemnation, and they're trying to make us feel like, can I tell you, uh, any time there's a voice that comes to you that, that begins to make you feel like uh, you've got, you're obligated to do this, or I, you, you're not obligated. You're doing something... Uh, out of the out of the leading of the spirit. Come on. It didn't say those that are led by the spirit are manipulated through religious words. Come on. Amen. It said you are because you're sons of God. You're led by the spirit of God. Amen. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes. Even in your giving, you should give because God's prompting you and out of the goodness of your heart. And not because somebody is trying to manipulate your money. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? I already told you, I believe this with all my heart. I've been in ministry 47 years, and I remember early, you know, I watched this so easy. Some of those guys could get up, and, and, and they called it back then, they called it lifting the offering. And uh, they get up and just thousands of dollars flow in. I had the first church I pastored in Ashburn, North Carolina. Uh, I need to make a mail my uh, my newsletter, and I had a uh, one of these cheap. I think it was two cents a piece to mail them back then under the under the uh, nonprofit thing, and I needed seven dollars to mail my newsletter, and I had to take up three offers to get it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the truth. I had to take up three offers to get it. I mean, uh, the the main theme say, uh, theme in that uh, church when I took it, you know, there's already a going church, and they asked me. Uh, to come and uh, and take the church, and so I, I've been there doing a New Year's Eve service. It was packed out. <laughs> My first Sunday there, there was two women and three children. <laughs> they began to grow and and, and so forth. Uh, in about six months, we had uh, nearly uh, right at a hundred people. But uh, but what I'm saying is. Being led by the Spirit. I give because it's my pleasure to give unto God. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, I don't give because somebody's made me feel guilty that if I don't, you know, we had a financial financial peace class and, and I was amazed at how the preachers were uncomfortable about people getting a handle on how they handle their money. Preachers that wear fine clothes uh, and 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 they out front they shine and look very pretty, but in, in the back room they're a mess. That's right. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not trying not trying to preach your bash this morning. I'm just telling you, you need to quit worshiping preachers anyhow. Amen. That's right. That's right. Come on. Somebody love the Lord. And see. That's what this apostolic movement that I was talking about last night, not trying to be, you know, some of those that have got caught up in that. And, and, and for a little bit, I thought, well, is this right? Is this the way to go? Maybe I should uh, get in on this. And, and, but that's why God said, no, you're, you've got to listen to me uh, because uh, they, true worshipers, worship Him how? Spirit. In spirit and in truth. Not in the flesh. Not after uh, men. Thank God for men and women of God who have had a sure word of God in their mouth. Thank God for uh, anointings like we've heard this morning. Thank God for those uh, that, that have a, had the anointing to destroy the yoke. But, but let me tell you what. The real ministry today is beginning to raise up and impart. 
Come on. Yeah. Beginning to raise up and impart something by the Word of God. The only thing that can bring you life, and I was on, it, on the edge of it last night in Ezra, the third chapter, uh, the only thing that can bring us life uh, is the Word of the Lord. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they're spirit and they are life. Amen. Yes. Back on that table, again, there's a, there's a, a message called um, Sound of Heaven. If they didn't get all of them last night, it's called sound, The Sound of Heaven. Right, more accurately, it should be called the sound of the Spirit, I guess, because uh, it outlines some things that happen when you're hearing the Spirit. The real Spirit begins to gather people together unto God. Yes. Not under, not under men and not under women and not under... Uh, can somebody hear what I'm saying? Not under some personality. See, uh, another thing that's happened that's caused us to come into confusion is Christian television. Not trying to fight Christian television. There's some good stuff on there. But can I tell you, uh, Christian television has brought us into an entertainment industry mentality rather than uh, a mentality of worship. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. I, I love good singing and all, but, but just singing in itself is not worship. Yeah. But worship will bring you into a place where you sing. Yes. Yeah. And you hear what I'm saying? When he talked about restoring, uh, restoring the worship in the third chapter of Ezra, uh, not one time did he talk about singing until we got over here, and the the tap, the uh, foundation of the temple was restored. And when the foundation of the temple was restored, all of a sudden, uh, here come singers, here come uh, uh, people that, that out of the abundance of what God was doing began to sing a new song. Amen. Can somebody praise the Lord? See, and when you really begin to worship in spirit and in truth, out of your belly is going to flow rivers, whether it's in worship and or whether it's in word. But God is setting you up, hallelujah, up to begin to manifest. I believe it was Cheryl that said something about uh, the, the glow of the Lord. I believe there's a people that's going to glow. It's not going to be all the preachers that say, that say they glow in the dark either. There's going to be a people that glow uh, with the presence of the living yes. God. What do I mean? Yes. That people are going to know that there's something about them. Yes. Yes. I remember years ago being in, in Columbus, Ohio, uh, preaching a message, and we were standing in a hotel that was uh, out in a section. I didn't know. I didn't know. First time I've been to Columbus, and I didn't know where it was. Didn't know uh, anything about. Uh, so it was after church, and we wanted to grab uh, something to eat. So it was a little hot dog stand. Pulled in there, uh, got out, and uh, there was this tall person. I thought it was a woman. <laughs> but whenever uh, it opened its <laughs> opened his mouth, it was it, the uh, sound of a man came came out, and he ordered and he stepped back and just I mean had the real feminine uh, action, but there was a spirit. Not only on him, but on the whole area, there was something going on. And so, whenever I, all I did was order a hot dog, and he turned around and said, "Who are you?" And he began to back up, and that spirit in him began to recognize the anointing that was there. You see, I didn't glow in the dark. I didn't know. Until I opened my mouth, all I did is order a hot dog. I didn't say Jesus. I didn't say. <laughs> but there was something about the sound that came forth. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Amen. You see, that's the thing that will set the captive free is whenever, come on. Whenever there's life flowing out of you, it'll set the captive free. Yes. Hallelujah. See, and whenever, let, let me tell you something. Be not deceived in thinking that, that those things that have held grip on you for years are going to let go easily because whenever you begin to declare your freedom all hell may break loose yes. Yes. come on whenever God's trying to do something fresh in your marriage I want to tell you there will be confusion there will be something that begins to happen there will be things that try to pull you apart but see, I, I, I think it's a day whenever we as men and women of God need to speak peace to the storms in marriages because every, I know preachers right now that's in havoc 
because of their marriage, because of things, uh, moral failures, and all that stuff that's going on. But I want to tell you, it's a time that we see God beginning to heal um, the union because the union in the marriage represents Christ in His church. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? It's not just happening out in the world. It's just as prevalent inside the church. Yes. This is not to bring condemnation if you've been through a bad marriage or whatever. Uh, but, but it's to tell you that there's a spirit behind that. Amen. In fact, the Bible, Paul, Paul actually addressed it. said if a man desire uh, the office of a bishop, and again, you know, we got bishops coming out the ears, you know, uh, anymore. Uh, and you begin to look and examine, and they don't, it doesn't line up with the Word. I'm not trying to bring... Uh, rules on people. I'm just telling you uh, that, that if any man desires the office of a bishop, he should take care of his own house first. Yes. 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 That's right. Amen. Or overseer, leader, whatever. If, if you desire to be something in God before you go out and grab your title, get some things in order. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Somebody bless the Lord. Amen. And I think that includes our finances and everything else. Sometimes I have people come to me, Brent, I don't know whether to give this or not. You know, I don't know whether to give this to the Lord or not. I say, well, are your bills paid? Are you somebody love the Lord? Now, I believe you should pay your tithe. I believe the tithe is the first 10, uh, 10%. And uh, I'm, I, I, feel, I feel peace here. And I wouldn't do this in front of every pastor I know. They'd, have a, uh, they'd be closing the door behind me quickly, but... <laughs> But see, I believe whenever you learn, if you learn how to handle your money, then God begins to bless you abundantly, and you got more to give. Amen. Come on, Amen. I, somebody look at somebody and say abundance. abundance. Now do it again and say, I'm not afraid of abundance. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid, of, I'm not afraid of, abundance. of abundance. We 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 just like most of you, we live on a on basically a fixed income and and all, and, and get traveling expenses sometimes when we go out to preach. Uh, God's blessed us, and uh, you know, and we're. we're Sure, I'm going to get to go to, to Africa with, uh, I believe it's the hand of God. God supernaturally is, is supplying the need. And I'm going to tell you what, He's not waiting until the economy is perfect or anything else. I don't know why I'm on this, but I'm, I feel the Holy Ghost flowing in it. We, we, you can't wait till the economy is perfect to begin to obey God. Right. right now, in the midst of this, learn how to handle your money. And then out of, out of that, begin to learn how to give in abundance. Because you need to create a flow. That's true. Sometimes abundance is relating to what you have. The woman, the widow woman, when Elijah said, give me a little cake first, I'm going to tell you that was abundance because it was all she had. That's right. Yes. Yes. I said that was all she had because that was the difference in her and her son living or dying for another day. Yes. Yes. So out of her abundance, I don't look at somebody's uh, offering whether, whether they got a, a, a dollar or a, a or whether they got a ten thousand dollars. As long as they're getting out of their uh, out of their abundance, Jesus said it about the woman that put in the penny. He said she's given more than all of them. That's right. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yes. See, but at the same time, if you have means and you're holding back. Can you hear what I'm saying? You need to bless the house of God. And I don't mean just the building. I mean, I mean the house of God. And if you bless the head of the of the church, if you bless the pastors, can I tell you? It comes. Ronald Reagan uh, talked about trickle down economics. It begins to come. It starts at the head and comes down on there, on the whole body. Can somebody love the Lord? I'm not a money preacher, y'all. I'm just feel all this coming forth uh, to understand. Let's get it in balance. Right. If you're going to give, uh, if you like that with a woman and you, the, the last thing you've got is going to be the, the difference between you living and dying, make sure it's God and make sure the word of the Lord uh, that you know that the preacher that's telling you to do that uh, is telling you out of a desire and out of knowing that in your obedience, God's going to bless you. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Amen. Sometimes it hasn't been out of obedience. It's been out of pressure that somebody put on us 
But hallelujah, I'm going to tell you what. I see, I see offerings increasing right here, brother. Because God, you've got a people that have set themselves in line for the blessing of the Lord, that have set themselves in line. Hallelujah. That, that they be a flow because if they're slowing out of you, it can flow into you. That, 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 that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I take that myself, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Ezra, just finishing up a couple of things here, and then we want to talk a little bit about Nehemiah because God's not just only interested in the temple. Okay, let me, let me, let me touch just a couple of quick things here. In, in Ezra, where we stopped at, and then I know we're, I'm competing with the dinner in the back today, but <laughs> it's good to hear somebody call lunch dinner again. You know, I grew up in North Carolina, and we call what they now call lunch, dinner, and then the evening meal was supper. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then today in most of the circles I go around, it's lunch and then dinner. <coughs> so, you know, since preachers never eat at the right time anyhow, <coughs> it doesn't really matter because, you know, I know my, grand, my grandfather had a farm in, in uh, close to Boone, North Carolina, 80 acres up there, and if you wasn't at the table at 5 o'clock in the morning, you missed breakfast. Times have changed, thank God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought somebody said, well, I just missed it. <laughs> no, I mean, they had a lock on the cupboard whenever. I used to like to talk my grandmother into giving me some of that strawberry jelly she made in there. I think her recipe died with her, though. I hadn't tasted any more like that since. But anyhow. Oh, my, my. Thank you, Lord. In the 12th chapter, a 12th verse of the third chapter, just touching a couple of things, and I touched kind of at the end of it. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests. Somebody say, set the priests. Set the priests. You see, I believe it's a day whenever the, the, the priest, and look at somebody say he's not talking about preachers. You are the kings and priests unto God. I think, uh, do you understand that? Yes. When we talk about preachers, we're not only the uh, priests. We're not only talking about preachers. We're talking about the body, the whole. Uh, uh, see, God's always desired a nation of priests. Yes, amen. A whole nation of priests, and can I tell you, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. So, watch what happens. Set the priests in their apparel with trumpets. Now sometimes I wear I wear a collar if it comes in. Brother Lee told me uh, said when we go to Africa take your collar because we we probably preaching some in the Anglican church. Good morning, or is it? It's still morning, isn't it? Yeah. All right, She's here. Afternoon. we're checking up on you, Mom. <laughs> you sure look nice today. Don't y'all think she looks nice? Yeah. Yeah. You came. At, we we. I was just talking about royalty, and here you come. <laughs> See, the priests, uh, in their apparel, with the trumpets, somebody say a message. A message. Come on. I believe it's time that we put on the robes of righteousness. Yes. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes. We quit letting those things, those condemnation things arise in our minds, and I know y'all scattered this morning. I didn't mention the dinner in the back, back and y'all already went. So <laughs> stay with me a few minutes. And see here, uh, there's an apparel. There, there's. It, it's not whether you, we used. To, I remember back in my uh, early days in pre. Uh, you know, if a woman come in with pants on, we had uh, a panic attack. Yeah. Oh God, we got a Jezebel in the house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we thought she had more power than God because you know. Got a Jezebel in the house. Uh, y'all, y'all were there, wouldn't you? Y'all were in the yeah. see our pair of ear bobs. And Sister Joyce is done going to hell here. She's got it. <laughs> <laughs> see, but but we found out it wasn't about an outward appearance. It's putting on Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah! I want you to put. A, I want you to be a put on today. Come on, but what I want you to put on is Christ. Yeah. I want you to be clothed with His righteousness knowing that He's already paid the price for that. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. 
See, so here, uh, the priests are set in their place in their apparel with trumpets. They got a message. The trumpet represents a message. Yes. I'm in a house where I'm hearing a message of life today. Praise yes. God. Three services. Now, I've heard this man uh, get up, and well, more than that in, in Clayton and, in, and all, but I've heard this man get up with a life-giving flow, yes. not only in, in, in the, the worship and the singing, but a life-giving flow in the Word of God. Yes. yes. You're not going to find that everywhere. Most of the time, you're going to find condemnation. You're either going to be condemned for your sins or you're either going to condemn, be condemned because uh, you're not treating uh, uh, the, the, the hierarchical positions right. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes. Nowhere in the Scriptures are we to bow down to bishops and apostles and all those things. Yes. Uh, everywhere in the Scriptures uh, that we become the least among you. Hallelujah. Can I understand what I'm saying? There's a humility that goes along with the ministry. Yes. And if that humility is absent, then uh, you should not, you should find somewhere uh, to be where that there is humility and where there's humbleness and where you can know that you're clothed with the righteousness of God. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes. Hallelujah. And the Levites and the sons of uh, Asaph and the symbols and, and uh, to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David. Uh, king of Israel. And they sang together. Somebody say together. together. I'm going to end up here and we're going on to Nehemiah. They sang together. You see, there's something that happens when the foundation begins to come together. Amen. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Now, I, I realize there's too many of us uh, for, uh, for there to be one great big humongous church, although many people would li like that kind of thing, uh, that there's a purpose and a reason that we have different assemblies and we're on different levels uh, and all, but at the same time, uh, there should not be division in the body of Christ. Right. We brought that down to, to saying, well, I feel like there's division in the house today. Well, it's not whether it's in the house, uh, it's been in the ministry. It's been uh, from church to church. It's been from city to city. God began to tell me uh, that it's time that we begin to see cities of refuge. I'm getting ahead of myself for Nehemiah. Cities of refuge. I feel safe in this house. Yes. I feel safe with this man and woman of God. I feel safe with you because I'm hearing a word that's going to give me life. I'm hearing, uh, the, I'm feeling the power of God operating to a place that I'm, say it with me one more time, I'm coming out. <laughs> Come on, I'm coming out of bondage. I'm coming out of those places that have held me captive because God said, build again the temple of the Lord. And you are the lively stones we build with. Yes. All right. And we, we talked a little bit uh, at the end last night. Uh, but many of the priests and Levites, verse 12, uh, Levites and chiefs of the fathers who were ancient that had seen the first house when, when this foundation, when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes wept with a loud voice, and many shouted for joy. There have been those that have gone before us that had a true vision of God. Yes. Some of us sat in their meetings and heard the word of the Lord and became excited with them, but because of the captivity of religious voices that came along, Somewhere, some of those visions fell by the wayside. I doubt I could go around this room and we could uh, probably say, I, I really thought what this brother or what this sister was preaching, but it didn't happen. That doesn't mean they didn't have a true vision from God. It simply means that something deterred it. I know I'm going into Nehemiah. I remember, uh, actually, Brother Terry was up at, uh, up at Whitwell and Brother Turner's, whenever I was preaching this message uh, out of Nehemiah way, way back then. Uh, but because there was a delay, and in the delay of rebuilding the wall, uh, it, it was a 16-year delay. And I said, do you really want to delay building the house of God or build, rebuilding the wall for 16 years? Well, it went 16 years after that. 
before I begin to see some things begin to fall into place. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Where are you today? Do you want to delay again the move of God? I enjoy good, spirit-filled church services. We need that to refuel and be strong. Uh, but it's not just about uh, 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 good organ music or good... Can you hear what I'm saying? Amen. I remember back under the tent said, I thought if I can get me a, a, a Hammond organ and somebody to play it good, I can have some good meetings. And we did because we knew how to stir up the, the emotions and we need our emotions stirred at times because even our emotions need to come into a place of life. But uh, it's not just about that because whenever you leave, uh, there's no organ, uh, Hammond organ going into your house and there's no uh, body, no super preacher there to lay hands on you and, and the enemy comes and you begin to uh, fall under those things. You need the power of God that's going to walk. Come on. So you can turn right around and rebuke the enemy. So you can turn right around and lay hands on uh, the sick. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Because the ministry is not been supposed, ever supposed to have been the only ones that did all the work. That's right. Alright. I'm driving up this thing home I reckon. But see, some people, whenever they saw it, they wept because they say, I remember when I had vision. Yes. I remember whenever I was hearing from God. I know men and women that, that at one time had vision from God, but somewhere along the line, somebody began to pull them aside and began to draw them aside uh, because they put their focus on, on riches and wealth rather than uh, the kingdom of God. Somebody hear what I'm saying? I've already told you uh, that if you if you walk get God's way, God will bless you with abundance. And if He blesses you with abundance because you've got a given heart, He blesses the church. He blesses the men and women of God. But see, that's not what we're after. I'm after seeing you begin to walk in a place where you're free. Amen. Hallelujah. And the power of the living God is operating out of you. Can somebody bless the Lord? Yes. And when you understand that, uh, then, then uh, things begin to happen. Those that do know that God shall do exploits. Do you know Him? Hallelujah. Do you know Him? Are you intimate with Him? Do you uh, Can you sit down and have that conversation with God with confidence that He's hearing you? Hallelujah. Come on. And if you can't, let me tell you why you can't. Because somewhere along the line, somebody brought you under condemnation and made you feel like you had to hear from God through them. I believe you're going to hear from God. And you're hearing from God through me and through Brother Ted. I believe that. But I also believe you're the sheep of God and you can hear from God for yourself. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Nehemiah, the first chapter. What's really significant to me, even about at one time, uh, Ezra and Nehemiah were one book, and they somehow in the translations over the years they wound up dividing them into two different books. But uh, but not only did God send those teams in to rebuild the temple of God. And that's why our focus can't just be inside four walls now. Amen. But he sent now in Nehemiah's time, he's sending back in to rebuild the wall of the city. And the wall was not to separate, it's not to separate, it's for protection. Somebody say protection. protection. Who is the city of God? We, we know we're the temple, but now we're also the city. Yes. So we begin... God's not just interested about what, what's happening inside four walls now. He's half interested in protection uh, of the city of God. And now there's, there's I'm not going to go through all the gates. That's a whole, whole new study. Uh, but you know, it starts from the dung gate and goes all the way into all these gates uh, that he's talking about. But in chapter 1 and verse 9, just for the sake of time, let me pick out some things I want uh, to share with you. Uh, but if you turn unto me and help and keep my commandments and do them, or keep the word of God, if you walk in my statutes, uh, though there were, were though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet I will gather. Somebody say gather. Yeah. Yeah. The purpose of God for the church is that we be gathered. 
will gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen and set my name there. Somebody say his name. His name. Brother Taylor on the first night uh, was talking about the name or the nature. The city that God has always desired is a place where He can put His name. Hallelujah. Not just a plaque above the door, but a place of people, if you will, where He can put His name, His nature. Uh, in Matthew, the 23rd chapter, you, well, let me, let me turn that. We'll come back to Nehemiah. But Matthew, the 23rd chapter, in the 37th verse, Jesus stood at this same place where Nehemiah had stood and he began to look and looked over the city to rebuild the walls. And Jesus begins to say, Oh, Jerusalem! Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stoned them which are, set, are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered? What was he doing in Nehemiah? Gathering. Yes. There has to be a gathering unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. There has to be a gathering unto the Lord. What are you gathering unto? You know, people gather under under a, a political views. They they gather under, uh, you know, under. Uh, it was fair last week in our city, and they gather under entertainment. They gather into, if you call it fair, but <laughs> but he said, how often will I have gathered you? Gather thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicks under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I, I'm sensing a prophetic word. Forgive me for, for this little pause. But I'm sensing a prophetic word that we're going to see people that have refused to gather. We're going to begin to see some failure and some things begin to come down that man has built because they didn't build it as under the Lord and they didn't gather as under the Lord. And just as Jesus stood over Jerusalem, and we know it, we know he was was talking about the, under that old law, he had desired to gather them, even by, all the way back into Nehemiah, the purpose was to gather the people. Now down about the twelfth verse, back into Nehemiah, about the twelfth verse here. Thank you, Father. He says, And I arose in the night. I and some few men with me, neither, neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do in Jerusalem, neither was there any beast with me, save the one I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well and the dung port, and viewed the walls. And this is where Jesus is viewing the city from. Uh, Walls of Jerusalem which were broken down at the gates, therefore were, uh, therefore were consumed with fire. I, then I went on to the gate of the fountain and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me. Then I went, uh, then went I up in the night to the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley. And so returned. Now, somebody say gathering. Jesus prayed gathering. to the Father. He said, Father, make them one. Yes. They weren't talking about just those few that were there with him. He's talking about the body. Somebody say one. 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 Brother. I think about Brother Parks. I want to make this statement because he's so much on this uh, message now. We've got to understand God's a spirit. Yes. He says, as we are one. How was Jesus in the... Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. 
I don't think he was talking about that outward flesh because the Father never, except through Jesus Christ, that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. There's one Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's one God. Yeah. And we can only understand, back, I, back in my early days, I've always believed there's one God and one Spirit, but back in my early days, I made about water baptism. But see, it wasn't about water baptism, it was about being baptized in the name. Hello? I'm, you know, somebody, I believe in water baptism. I've been baptized so many times. <laughs> you know, and every way you want to be baptized, I guess. But, uh, but see, it's more than it's more than getting in the water and getting wet. Amen. Because when you're baptized in the Son, the only thing that's better about this baptism is the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not just outwardly, but it's inwardly. Yes. You're filled with Holy Ghost. How many has been baptized in water? When I was baptized in water, I didn't want to get none up my nose, none in my ears. None, uh, come on, I didn't want, come on. But whenever I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost, I don't only want it outside, I want it inside. I want every part of water to be consumed with that baptism of the Holy Spirit. Baptized with God. See, there's something in me, Brother Terry, that's, that, that's desiring to see a people, a people, a city, the city of the living God, I'd be so filled with God until we're not only consumed on the outside, but there's something on, well, you see that song, something on the inside telling me to go ahead. It's what's on the inside uh, that's eternal. It's what you don't see. Amen. Amen. And see, that that's on the inside has no limitation. My little sister's in a wheelchair here. So that means her physic and physically she's got some limitation. But there's a God on the inside. Hallelujah. That has no limitation. There's a God on the inside. Hallelujah. That can speak the word. And do more uh, through her. Hallelujah. Than she could do while she was walking. Because the power of the Holy Ghost has no limitation. Can somebody do it? Yes, my God. Thank you, Father. Now, Hebrews, the 25th chapter. That's not the 10th, 10th chapter and 21st. <laughs> no, no 25 chapters in Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews the 10th chapter. You'll pray for my camera person here. So. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. The 10th chapter. Still talking about unity. Still talking about gathering together in, in, into one. 10th chapter and the 25th verse. And familiar scripture, you know it. Well, let's back up to 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith yeah. without wavering. Yes. Say without, without wavering. You know what? It's not always the things you go through in life that cause you to waver. Mm -hmm. It's not being equipped for those things you go through in life. Right. That's right. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yes. See, it's not always the, the things, you know, I found out if I'm prepared, I can go through a lot more than I could if I wasn't prepared. Yes. Call it blindsided. You know, you, you, you're blindsided with something. Uh, but he says, hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering, for he is faithful that is promised. And let us consider one another. So I say consider one another. You see, I, there's something about doing things God's way that brings us into a place of power. Because if we consider one another, then we can become one with our brother and sister. A popular message has been uh, out of the scripture where any two agree is such any one thing. But if you are not considering one another, you're not going to be in agreement on what God's doing. True. Yes, amen. True. But if I consider my brother, if I consider brother brother uh, Taylor, and consider what his need, and the, the the scripture teaches us that we prefer our brother. Yes. And when we're considering one another, uh, then that brings us into a power of agreement that if there's any weapon formed against us, it cannot prosper. Amen. We step over into the 
strong power, the strong arm of the Lord. We talk about sitting on the right hand of God, and and you know there's there's more to it than just sitting there. So you're holding hands with God. Uh, you're sitting on the, the power. You're sitting there where you've got access to His power, to the anointing of God. Yes. Look at somebody say He's talking about you. I want to make it clear. I'm not just talking about some glowing and dark preacher now. I'm talking about you because it's time for you as the saints of God to begin to mature and do the work of the ministry. Come on, if you, if you do that, then in, in a very little time you'd see this place be, become too small all of a sudden because the power of God would get out of four walls and you begin to speak the Word of God that's powerful, that's sharp, uh, that goes right down to the quick and the mire of the ball that begins to change people's lives. Yes, yes. yes Lord amen. Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm seeing something new, Brother Terry. I'm seeing a whole wave of a people coming into a new creation mentality. Yes. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things have passed away. Yes. I've been born again. I'm more than a conqueror. Yes. Yes. That's who I am. I'm a brand new, new creation. I'm a brand new man. You see, when we really walk in the reality of that, what hinders us? What really hinders us? <clears throat> what hinders us usually is some kind of religious thinking. Mm -hmm. Let me take an example. I'm, I, I'm being led by the Spirit just for a few minutes, so I'm going to sit down. For example, even physical science tells us that our body, that our body is created to renew itself every seven years. God created. How do you think those guys back in the lived seven, eight hundred years, some over a thousand years lived, lived because their bodies were created. But somewhere because of the curse and because we were taught now the main thing God wants is just come on to the Lord, honey. Get saved and get ready for heaven. <laughs> but then he created an earth for man to live on that is without end. That's right. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes. Peter, whenever Peter stood up, what people don't tell you is nothing about his message that said <clears throat> that said Jesus came to, to show us the way to heaven. Right. People had already been going to heaven. But whenever Jesus stood up on the day of Pentecost and he began to preach and quote and Joel, he said, and he has made known unto us the ways of life or the path to life. Yes. I began to study it. What does that mean? That means life. Not just life. You know, I don't want to just walk around and live and breathe. You know, you can have a breathing machine. I, that's not the quality of life I want. But see, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Yes. yes. I believe, whether I'm whether I'm part of it or not, and uh, I believe some of the stuff that, that has been preached before us that God has given us the power of the endless life and that there should be and can be a people that will roll, walk right on out of this realm into the life realm and, and not see death. Amen. I know it's the last enemy, but it's still an enemy. Amen. Come on, and we can't know the fullness of we can't know the total fullness of the manifestation that Jesus came to this planet to pay for until every enemy. Right. I, I remember a sister years ago. She's she's crossed over now, but but I remember years ago I was asking her. She was teaching life, and I said uh, her name was Betty. I said, Sister Betty, uh, tell me what you believe about uh, about life. And she said the last enemy that's to be destroyed is death. And said, as long as death is alive in every realm, in any realm, it's not destroyed. That's right. Now I believe I have passed from death unto life right now, spiritually. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. I believe you, as a born again believer, have passed from death unto life right now. Yes, amen. And that life is working in you. Yes. 
But I also believe that there's something else. See, a lot of times we put a period after, well, I saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Some people put the period after saved. Yes. Right. Oh, I'm saved and going to heaven. Are you, are you happy? <laughs> saved? Okay. She's happy with that. She's saved and going to heaven. <laughs> Somebody else, I, I, I don't, I can't really pinpoint a time whenever I had an uh, 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 experience that I said, well, now I'm sanctified. No, I think, anyhow. But anyhow, there, there are people who believe you have an experience kind of like being saved and being sanctified and all of a sudden now you're, you're holy enough that you've got to go through that, uh, that process. I believe the day I was born again, my sins were, which were as washed many away. were washed. I believe they're gone. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Some, some people put a period there. Now I speak in tongues and I, uh, you know, and, and, and now I'm full of the power of God. And thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm going to tell you, my life changed dramatically when I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. But some people put a period there. That's right. Look at somebody say there's more to come. More to come. Yes. Now, so I know people get mad at me. And I jump up and say, well, that's a finished work, but <laughs> nothing else to come. He finished the work, but he didn't finish moving. There's still, there's still a move of God that's going to be manifest in this planet. Yes. There's still a move of God if you're hungry for it. Is anybody hungry for yes. it? Yes. 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 See, we got her happy. She's saved and going to heaven. <laughs> Have you got the Holy Ghost? I do. You do you? She's, I'm looking at that smile. She's happy about it. <laughs> but there's something else. Churches are filled with people that are happy because and they think they're they're they've done done went to another level, they're above their Baptist brothers who don't believe in the the Baptist? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to Baptist. My mother's Baptist and I'd be in trouble if she were here today, but take the period away. Hallelujah. God's not finished. Yes, amen. I'm saved comma. That means there's something else to come. Yes. Feel the Holy Ghost come and there's something else to come. Amen. Just in summarizing where we've been, I will restore. Yes. Is there anybody in? Did anybody get a hold of that? Yes. Thank you, Lord. God is about to restore. My brother right over here, I don't know you, but I see the hand of God on you. And I see the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I, when I said that, something quickened in me toward you. God. A lot of things you thought you thought I'm I'm getting too old and it'll never happen. It'll never come. You know, one time I was one time I began to look at everything God had promised me and God had said, and I said, God, there's no way I can live long enough. And he said, Son, even if you die, I'm able to raise you up again and, and, and keep on going. Somebody bless the Lord. Yes, amen. And I just heard the Lord say, Brother, there's things that God's promised you even back in your younger days that God's not through yet. Thank you. And you're not through. Hallelujah. God's even touching your physical body right now. I sense that. God's touching you in some areas that you've been uh, worried about. And God, in the name of Jesus, stretch your hand. What's your name, brother? Levy. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you touched my brother. God, and we thank you, Lord, that you begin to heal of the physical. But God, I thank you, Lord, you're going deeper than that today. God, you're going uh, even to the very depths of his spirit, God. And you begin to heal him from the inside out. And in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, that there's dreams and visions that are being resurrected right now. God, that he stands up in you, Father. God, in the power of your resurrection. And God, there's much that he is still going to accomplish in this life. And God, I thank you, Lord. I see you reaching out to, to, to family. I don't know if it's children or not. But I see, I see family. I see those that you've been praying about. And in the name of Jesus, God, there's vision that you're beginning to revive in him that's going to come forth in Jesus' name. All over the house, if you need a touch from God, I want you to lift your hand. In fact, why don't you stand up with me? And let's just begin to declare the word of the Lord God. I declare healing upon this house. I declare the power of the living God that comes forth from here. 
God, Brother Terry, I, I'm going to do something. I just hear, heard the Lord uh, say, Father, we, we, we speak to the north, give up. We speak to the south, hold yes. up back. We speak to the east and the west, bring sons from afar, bring daughters. Yes. Uh, God, into this place, God, that are hungry for you, Father. God, in the name of Jesus, there's people that are sitting under dictators. They're sitting in places, God, that have had them in captivity. But God, I thank you, Lord, that they begin to hear the king declare to rebuild the temple. And Father, I thank you, Lord, this is a place you have set apart to rebuild the temple, God, that begins to bring a unity, that begins to bring the power of the living God alive again in this place, God. And not only are they rebuilding the temple, but God, the cities, walls, the protection of the people are being raised up. And in the name of Jesus, we call to the north, the south, the east, and the west to hold up back that the sons of God begin to come into this place for preparation and for raising up for a brand new day. God, in the name of Jesus, God, I speak to everybody that's, that's been suffering something in their physical body right now. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to heal that. But in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, that you go to every, uh, to the depths of their spirit. You get the thorn out today. You begin to remove those things that have festered and set over them. And in Jesus' name, we declare the healing of God on this house. We declare the healing of the power of God on America. Uh, God, we thank you, Lord, uh, that children that have been hurt and abused and left, uh, God, that, that are full of fear and doubt, God, that you feel them, that you touch them, that you uh, begin to heal those relationships. God, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, that you even bring preachers that have been that have been hurt and disillusioned and confused. God, and you begin to reactivate and refire and re, uh, God, rejuvenate the Word of God and the life that's in them. And in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Yes. God, that no weapon formed against us prospers because, yes. God, we're joined together in agreement. We're one in the Lord. And, God, we thank you, Lord, for the foundation that stands sure. We thank you for the foundation that's been laid, which is Jesus Christ. And, God, we declare, blessed is he that comes yes. in the name of the Lord. We declare over this house and over this people, over this pastor, uh, these pastors, God, Blessed is he and she who comes in the name of the Lord, and the work of the Lord be declared out of this place. Turn around. Help me. Help me. Turn around. I ain't got time to, to pray for everybody. Turn around and grab somebody right now in the name of the Lord and begin to pray for them. Father, in Jesus' name, we agree. We are in agreement with those uh, that we're touching right now, with our brothers, with our sisters. God, in the name of Jesus. God, that anything that would come against them, God, we stand with them. We are one. We are one. We're joined together as one faith, one person in Jesus' name. Okay, I want you to continue your prayer just a minute. I want you to listen to me just a minute. The Lord just spoke to me to, to, to give some instruction here. One of the things that he said we'd do is cast out devils. Yes. Let me define what a devil is. A devil is, is anything that opposes God. That's why Jesus said to, to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Because Satan's atti uh, Peter's attitude was something that was opposing God. There's something trying to work in, in every individual that's opposing your destiny, that's opposing uh, where God's taking you. And right now, the same person just prayed for you a minute ago. I want to ask them to pray again. You pray for each other. And I want you to cast out the devil. What do you mean? Now, don't get panicked. Some of y'all old, older folk have done seen all the puking in the bags and all that stuff. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about anything that opposes your purpose in God. We're casting it out. Will you do that with me? Come on. Just believe God for that person. Anything that would, would oppose Terry Taylor's purpose in God, we cast it out today. We cause it to be gone in Jesus' name. We declare our God that you set that duty
Hallelujah. 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 H